ColbyJack.net is proud to present From the Flames by Tricia M. Wilson. The people of the fire, the Blessa, led by their queens, have ruled the island of Alfea and oppressed the Driva, the people of the ice, for more than 16 generations. With the Drivian king in hiding and little hope on the horizon, the Driva looked to one person to save them from the vile Blessa, the Diviana. According to legend, the divinely gifted Diviana will one day overthrow the Blessa and restore the Drivian king to his rightful throne. But with the search having lasted for more than 400 years, will the Diviana ever come to light? Willow is the slave of the Raskpil family. Bought at the age of four, 20 years have passed since her life irrevocably changed. Her existence is no worse than any other slave. But within, Willow wonders if there isn't something more she should be doing with her life other than serving the ungrateful. Ordered to travel with her master's family to Sondertoft so her master's adult children can take part in an ancient rite of passage, Willow is shocked when she learns that she too must participate. Will she fail as all before her half? Will she rise to the challenge and become stronger after passing through the flames? Episode 56 Try concentrating, Hawk said as he crawled over to the group. Concentrating on your magic is how you make the daggers and spears appear. It might be the same for healing. Immediately realizing he was right, Willow again held her arms above the woman's wound and closed her eyes. Focusing on her magic energy, Willow tried to control the flow of magic into her hands and the wrist cuffs. After a few seconds of concentrating, she felt the energy following her wishes. It flowed into her hands, making them warm and tingly. Then Sigurd and Hawk gasped, making Willow open her eyes. A glowing ball of energy, unlike anything she'd seen before, was emanating from her hands, directed at the wounded woman's injury. Willow pushed away the astonishment she felt and trained all her thoughts and energy into her hands and healing the woman. The glowing ball of energy followed her thoughts and settled over the large wound. The second it touched the blood-soaked wound, the skin began to knit back together. When the skin was back together, the wound looked as if it were a week or two old. The woman gasped as she came fully conscious for the first time since the sword had skewered her. Her hands went to her once bloody stomach. With your hands, Willow said, still aiming her healing energy at the woman. You're not fully healed yet. How do you know? Hawk asked quietly from his position by the woman's head. Not sure, Willow answered. Just do. It took Willow another minute to completely heal the woman, and when the ball disappeared, Willow knew she was done. Dropping her arms to her sides, Willow felt as if she'd run a very long and grueling gauntlet. There wasn't an inch of her body which didn't ache. Resisting the urge to crumple upon the ground in exhaustion, Willow remembered Hawk and his near-death experience. Come here, she said to him, even as she crawled toward him. Wah, why? he asked, looking at her as if she'd lost her mind. You almost drowned. There's also a knot on the back of your head. What's the good of being able to heal you if you won't let me come here so I can patch you up? Putting one hand above the knot on his head and the other above his chest, Willow focused her remaining energy toward him. The glowing ball of light appeared in two places this time. The one at the back of his head made him look like he had a halo. As fast as the two balls of light appeared, they disappeared. Feel better, don't you? Willow asked as Hawk breathed in and out easier than he had before. Yeah, I do. Thanks. The rustling of fabric made Willow look over to the woman, who was now trying to get up. Hawk and Sigurd helped the woman sit up. Once in a sitting position, the woman felt with her hands the area where she'd been injured. You healed me, the woman said with wonder. Why? You helped keep those soldiers away, Willow said in response. Then after a slight pause, she asked, why? 
It was the right thing to do, the woman responded. That's why I healed you. I protect my friends. What's your name, friend? I'm Kalina, the woman answered. I am Willow, and this is Sigurd and Hawk. And the snow leopard? Kalina asked, looking directly into Adelina's eyes. What is her noble name? She is Adelina, Sigurd answered. How do you feel? I feel great, Kalina said. It's as if nothing happened. I'm glad. I've never healed anyone before, Willow said. Never? That I was the first? Yes, she answered. The first and hopefully the only. Not that I'm not glad I could help you, Willow hurried to say. It's just I hope nobody gets injured enough for me to have to heal them. You were very close to death. I know, Kalina admitted, brushing her fair hair back from her face. I could hear the gods calling my name, tempting me into the netherworld. But then you and your healing powers pulled me back to this world. I am grateful and in your debt, Lady Willow. Nonsense. It is us who are grateful for your help with the soldiers. How did you... Before Willow could finish her question, Hawk sneezed loudly, drawing everyone's attention to him and his soaking clothes. Maybe we should talk further after we've changed clothes and warmed up, Sigurd suggested. But we can't stay here, Hawk protested, indicating the bodies of the soldiers littering the forest floor. And I really don't think we can go back into the village. They've risked too much for us already. We don't even know if this is all the soldiers that were looking for us. More could be in this area. I wasn't going to suggest that we stay here or go into the village, Sigurd said. Maybe we could find a cave or an abandoned hut where we could stay the night. I know somewhere we could stay tonight. It's a cave not too far from here, where hunters usually stay. It has a fire pit and wood nearby, and we should be safe from anyone who's hunting us, Kalina said. Us? Willow repeated, not sure why Kalina was using that word when she wasn't one of the ones being hunted. If nobody else has any ideas, we'll go there. Willow tried to get to her feet, but her knees gave out the second she tried to stand up. Willow, Sig cried at her side in seconds. Are you all right, my love? Were you injured in the battle? No, Sig, I wasn't. They didn't get near enough to inflict any damage. Willow said through gritted teeth. Let me help you to your feet, Sigurd said, picking her up and setting her on her unsteady feet before she could blink. But her legs wouldn't hold her without his support. It's no good, Willow said, leaning heavily on Sigurd. I'm too weak to walk anywhere. Can't you heal yourself? Sigurd asked. I mean, you helped those two easy enough. Why can't you just send some of that healing energy back onto yourself? Where would this healing energy come from, O oh wise one? Val asked. If the energy comes from her, where will she find enough energy to give to herself? The heavens? Maybe you should see if those rifts cuffs will let you suck out some of his energy to replenish your own. Hush, Val. To answer your question, Sig, where would I get the energy to heal myself? You would get it from... Uh, oh he said, realizing the circular nature of the energy would flow if she tried to heal herself. Sorry, I, I should have realized. And he would have if he ever got his head out of his... Since that idea won't work, I'll carry you to the cave, Sigurd said, inadvertently cutting Val off. Don't you dare, Adelina said, coming up to Willow's side. Let the boy think for a moment. He's able to carry you anywhere. He'll drop you within twenty feet of here. I will carry you to safety. I've done it before, and I have a feeling this won't be the last time. I appreciate the offer, Sigurd, but I'm going to be riding on Adelina. She's much stronger than you, and will be better able to transport me long distances. Are you suggesting I couldn't safely get you to the cave? Sigurd asked, outraged. Yes, she is, Val said. No, I'm not. I'm just saying it would make more sense for her to carry me. If I fall asleep, she'll be able to carry my dead weight a lot easier. I didn't mean to insult you. Yes, she did, Adelina said. I'm sorry, my love, for jumping to conclusions. You are, of course, right. 
Lifting Willow up, he put her on Adelina's back, making sure she was stable before he fully let her go. I never thought I'd see the day when a person rode the legendary Snow Leopard, Kalina said. She's not riding me, Adelina growled. I am not a horse. People ride horses, not majestic leopards. I am allowing her to sit on my back while I walk. There is a difference. Yes, there is a difference. Kalina didn't mean to insult you, did you, Kalina? Willow said. No, I would never insult you. I have great respect for you and your companions, Kalina said, catching on very quickly. Can we get going? Hawk asked, running a tired hand through his damp hair. More soldiers could come at any moment, and I'd like to not be here if they do. Bird's right, Adelina said. We need to get moving. Some men are coming this way. From which direction? Willow asked, barely curbing the urge to look around for the men. From the south. Soldiers are heading this way from the south, she told the others. Will they interfere with us getting to the cave? Willow asked Kalina. No, she said with big eyes. Did she? Yes, she can sense the soldiers, though her accuracy comes and goes. Sometimes. Lead us to the cave. Don't tell the stranger about my weaknesses. What were you thinking? Adelina growled as she followed the others. And don't be mentioning my name in front of her, Val added. What's wrong with you two? The woman helped us and almost died. How can you not trust her? How can you trust her? Val countered. You only met her a few minutes ago. We know nothing about her or her past. She could be a spy. She's not a spy. Willow thought, if she was a spy, that soldier wouldn't have shoved the sword through her body. You don't know that, Adelina countered. Some of the cleverest schemes appear legitimate to everyone, including the person pulling off the scheme. It may take years or generations to uncover one's real reasons for doing what appears heroic or selfless today. By your reasoning, I'd never trust anyone, including Hawk and Sigurd. What do you need with them when you have us? Adelina asked. There is the little matter of love, Val said. Love? Yes, love, or mating as you might call it. Those men, one of them at any rate, might be able to give her love. But which one? Adelina wondered. Can we get back on topic and not talk about my non-existent love life? I was thinking of inviting her to accompany us providing she wants to, and Sigurd and Hawk agree. Didn't we just have this conversation? Val asked. You want her to come with us on a semi-secret quest, with the Queen's men coming after us at every turn, knowing nothing about her. Did you hit your head when you dived back into the water? No, I didn't hit my head, Willow answered. And before you ask, I haven't gone crazy. It never hurts to have another person out on the trail, guarding our backs. I also never planned to invite her before learning more about her. I'm not stupid. Then prove it to us. Don't say anything about her coming with until at least tomorrow. I want to see if she brings it up and suggests it to us, Val said. You have a feeling this meeting was a little too coincidental? Adelina asked. Yes, something about this doesn't feel right. You have been listening to From the Flames by Trisha M. Wilson. Read, recorded, mastered, encoded, and produced by Kobe Tracks. This work is released under a Creative Commons 3.0 attribution, non-commercial, share-alike license. Do what you want with it, just don't try to profit from it. Heaven knows we can't. If you have any questions, comments, or rants you wish to share with us, we can be reached at colbytracks at colbyjack.net. At C O L B Y T R A X at symbol C O L B Y J A C K dot net. Yep, I sing it too. If you want to follow the exploits of Trisha in Twitter land, just search for Lady Trisha W on Twitter or follow the ever dashing, courageous, hardworking, intelligent, and immensely humble Colby Tracks on the Twitters as well. 
If you find that you can't just wait to find out what will happen with Willow, the strong dude and the annoying dude, be heartened to know that From the Flames is available from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Smashwords, as well as from our little shop. Didn't you know about our little shop? Why, yes, we have a little shop located at shop. That's S-H-O-P dot Kobejack dot net. That's shop dot Kobejack dot net. Yeah, real original there. There you will find the latest ebook versions of all our works in both Mobi and ebook, all DRM free, as well as audiobook versions of such works as Firmware Hijacked and Proxy, as well, naturally, as well as From the Flames. The audiobooks differ from the podcasts in that the headers and bumpers only run once, and the episodes are grouped in hour long episodes for easy burning to CD or for downloading on the go. If you find you don't need any stuff, but just want to thank us monetarily for our efforts here, just head on over to ColbyJack.net, select either audio or visual, and look for the donate button located on the blog roll. Well, anyway, thank you for listening. Have a wonderful week, and remember to be fabulous. <laughs>